Hi, my name's Amara. Welcome to 100 Stories Deep. Today I'm reading Sam and the Tigers, written by Julius Lester and illustrated by Jerry Pinkney. And I chose this book because it's one of my favourites from growing up. Sam and the Tigers. Once upon a time, there was a place called Sam Sam Samara, where the animals and the people lived and worked together like they didn't know they weren't supposed to. There was a little boy in Sam Sam Samara named Sam. Sam's mama was also named Sam. So was Sam's daddy. In fact, all the people in Sam Sam Samara were named Sam. But nobody ever got confused about which Sam was which. And that's why nobody was named Jolene or Natisha or Willie. One day, Sam and Sam and Sam went to the marketplace to get some new clothes for school. The first place they went was Mr Elephant's Elegant Habiliments. Mr. Elephant liked words as big as him that nobody could say. Sam's mother picked out a nice brown jacket and white shirt. That will look very handsome on you. Sam shook his head. Uh-uh, that ain't me, he declared. Don't you be talking back to your mama like that, Sam said. I'm a big boy now. I want to pick out my own clothes. Sam looked at Sam. Sam shrugged. Sam shrugged back. Sam nodded. Sam nodded back. Sam and Sam looked at Sam and nodded together. Sam grinned. Sam looked through the clothes like he was searching for truth. Finally, he shouted, that's what I want. He held up a coat as red as a happy heart. Sam started to protest. You can't wear something like... Sam stopped Sam. He's a big boy now. We've got to let him make his own decisions. Sam paid Mr Elephant for the red coat and off they went to Monkey's magnificent attire to look for pants. Sam looked until he found a pair of pants as purple as a love that would last forever. Sam shook her head, sighed and paid Mrs Monkey for the pants. Off they went to the feline's finest finery to look for a shirt. Sam picked up one as yellow as tomorrow. Yes, he shouted. Sam shuddered, paid Miss Cat for the yellow shirt and off they went to Mr Giraffe's genuine stupendous footwear emporium. Sam found a pair of silver shoes shining like promises that are always kept. Sam paid Mr Giraffe and closed her pocketbook. That's it, she declared. We've got all your clothes. Let's go home. Sam shook his head. I ain't through yet. You got a new coat, a new pair of pants, a new shirt and new shoes. What else do you need? I'm not sure, but I know when I'll see it. Sam and Sam followed Sam through the marketplace. He looked and looked and looked until finally, yes, he put into an umbrella as green as a satisfied mind. Sam paid Br'er Rabbit and then they went home. The next morning was the first day of school. Sam put on his new clothes and looked at himself in the mirror. Ain't I fine, he declared. Sam went downstairs to breakfast, his new clothes shining brighter than Mr Sun when he comes back from his winter vacation. Sam and Sam had put on sunglasses to Sam and Sam had to put on sunglasses to protect their eyes from all the colours Sam was wearing. You better be careful, Sam said. You might put Mr Sun out of business. 
If I knew how to sit in the sky without a chair, I would. Sam and Sam kissed Sam goodbye and he headed off for school. Sam had not gone very far before he saw a tiger coming towards him. The tiger stopped and looked at Sam. Sam stopped and looked at the tiger. Sam, I'm going to eat you up, said the tiger. Sam shook his head. I don't like that idea. Why don't you take my red coat instead? The tiger looked at the coat. Nice coat. It's a deal, Sam. Sam took off his coat and gave it to the tiger. The tiger put it on. Ain't I fine, said the tiger. Yes, you are, agreed Sam. The tiger went on his way. Sam went on his. Before long, here come another tiger. The tiger stopped and looked at Sam. Sam stopped and looked at the tiger. Sam, I'm going to eat you up. Sam shook his head. I don't like that idea. Why don't you take my pretty yellow shirt? The tiger looked at the shirt. Nice shirt, Sam. It's a deal. Sam took off his shirt and gave it to the tiger. The tiger put it on. Ain't I fine, he exclaimed. You are indeed, Sam agreed. The tiger went on his way. Sam went on his. Sam had an idea of what kind of day it was going to be. And when he saw the next tiger coming, he took off his shoes. Here you go, Sam said, holding out the shoes. Good deal for you, bad deal for me. I've got four feet, you only got two shoes. Feet, Sam exclaimed. These are ear shoes. The tiger put them on. Ain't I fine, he declared. You are indeed, Sam agreed. The tiger went on his way. Sam didn't see any point in moving and sure enough, along came another tiger. Here, Sam said, offering the tiger his green umbrella. Tigers don't need umbrellas, he declared. I'm going to eat you, Sam. If you do, it will send your cholesterol way up, Sam began. Don't you understand? You could be the first tiger smart enough to carry an umbrella. What would I carry it with? I need my feet for walking. Use your tail. The tiger wrapped his tail around the umbrella and held it over his head. Ain't I fine, he exclaimed. Indeed you are, agreed Sam. The tiger went on his way. Sam went on his, hoping he wouldn't see another tiger. All he had left was his purple pants. Before his help had time to take a good look around, here come another tiger. You know the routine, said the tiger. Sam nodded and took off his pants. Take them. The tiger put them on. Ain't I fine, he declared. I could care less, Sam pouted. Look at me, stood there in his underwear. Bad day, Sam, tiger said, and went on his way. Sam started crying. He cried and he cried and he cried. Sam might still be crying if he hadn't heard a loud and very scary noise. Grrr. What was that? Grrr. It's the tigers. They don't like my clothes and they've come back to eat me. Sam hid behind a big tree and peeped out. In a clearing, he saw the tigers strutting around in a circle. I'm the finest, growled the tiger in the red coat. No way, insect breath. I'm the finest, said the tiger in the yellow shirt. Uh-uh, declared the tiger with the silver shoes on his ears. I'm finer than you two losers. No way, proclaimed the tiger carrying the green umbrella in his tail. I'm the finest. You make me laugh, 
snorted the tiger wearing the purple pants. I am the finest tiger that ever was, ever is, and ever will be. The tigers were so angry, they were ready to fight. Tiger took off his red coat. Tiger took off his yellow shirt. Tiger took off his purple pants. Tiger took off his silver shoes. Tiger let the green umbrella drop from his tail onto the ground. They snarled and they growled and snapped at each other until suddenly they were rolling and wrestling and wrestling and rolling on the ground. They wrestled and rolled and snarled and snapped right up to the tree where Sam was hiding. Sam ran to the clearing and peered out from behind the green umbrella to see what was going on. The tigers were running around the tree, each one holding the tail of another tiger in his jaws, each trying to catch the other. Hey tigers, Sam called, don't you want your clothes anymore? Grr, the tigers ran faster. If you do, you better say something. If you don't, I'm going to take them. Grr. The tigers ran faster and faster. Sam put on his yellow shirt and then his purple pants, his red coat and finally his silver shiny shoes. Ain't I fine, he announced to the tigers, holding the green umbrella up like a victory flag. The tigers saw Sam wearing their clothes and that made them very, very angry. But they wouldn't let go of each other's tails. Instead, they ran faster and faster until all Sam could see was a blur. Faster and faster and faster, the tigers ran until they melted into a pool of butter as golden as a dream come true. Sam hurried to school and everybody agreed he was wearing more colours than Mr Sun when he went to bed. That afternoon, Sam was going home and saw the pool of butter gleaming at the base of the tree. He ran home, got a jug and filled it with the butter. He gave it to his mother. Can we have pancakes for supper? He asked her. She made the batter and started frying it in the butter. The pancakes were striped orange and black just like tigers. We're going to have more pancakes than we can eat, Sam said. Why don't you go and see if the neighbours want to join us for supper? A few minutes later, Sam and Sam came back with Miss Cat, Mr Elephant, Br'er Rabbit, Mrs. Monkey, Mr. Giraffe, Br'er Fox and Br'er Wolf. They were talking about the happenings in the community. Seems like five tigers had disappeared that morning and nobody could find them. Sam smiled but didn't say a word. Everybody sat down to eat, exclaiming that these were the best pancakes ever made on the front side of the earth. Sam ate 27, Sam ate 55, but Sam ate 169. Wearing all them colours can really make a boy hungry. And that was Sam and the Tigers by Julius Lester, illustrated by Jerry Pinkney. I chose that book because it's one of my favourite books from my childhood um, and it's something that I kind of look back really fondly of reading that story with my mum. I also really like the emphasis on clothes and the way that kind of clothes are an expression of who you are and how early you can kind of um, 
cement these ideas about who you are as a person through what you choose to wear. So I think what I would ask you to do is to think about maybe an item of clothes or um, an outfit or a tradition in terms of clothing that you held in your family um, from when you were really small and the significance of that. How does that say something about who you are now? Um, so for example, I, growing up, my parents always bought me Dr. Martin's um, shoes and I really, really hated them because everybody else had pretty dolly shoes. But as I get older, all I wear is Dr. Martin's. So whenever I put them on, I feel like this ironic sense of maybe just this once my parents were right but um yeah that was one of my favorite stories of all time sam and the tigers <laughs>